Welcome to the last class of Mod 1 uh, and the last class of Ethics. Uh, I know you guys are all sad. All right. Uh, um, the, uh, that didn't sound, no, nothing there sounded very sad. Uh, a quick note for uh, class purposes stuff. I'll probably end up saying this again uh, later for people who aren't here yet, but I want to say it as many times as I can. This paper, I've decided not to assign. Um, if you've already started working on it, good. <laughs> if you haven't started working on it, I think that's probably more likely for a lot of people. And and two days is, I think, not enough time for you guys to do this paper right. So I'm just not assigning it. Okay. Um, it, uh, it It's possible that you guys could cram it in there and do a good job, but uh, I'd rather just not do it than do it kind of half-assed. So, um, so what's that? If that's the grade you need, then it's too late for you. <laughs> like in that sense, the that you've had seven papers worth of grades and like ten or eleven discussion posts plus um, plus the discussion grade that I add in at the end of the day, depending on sort of your participation level um, and so on. So this and this paper is not worth any more points than any other paper. So it's not going to be the thing that saves you anyway uh, at the end of the day. So um, so again, this is and in fact. I can see it because I'm me, but you guys won't even be able to see this on the on the website anymore. It's gone, as far as you're concerned. It's hidden. So the final paper, again, not being assigned. So you have no more work due in this class. Yes? Okay. Um, that makes some people happy, makes some people sad. Um, I can tell some people are heartbroken. Again, um, it's just not enough time. I think before the end of the term, for you guys to put in a good, put in a good work with all the other stuff you have to do in your lives, um, and I just I don't want to do it that way. So, <laughs> you're welcome. It's not really a gift. I wasn't intending to. I'm not doing that. Just like I know, I'll give everybody like an early Christmas present. That was not the intention. It really is. the earlier, in a in a perfect world, you would write this paper because I'm interested to see how you can do. But instead, what we're going to do is try and do some of the things that we would do that paper in that paper today in class. And so we're going to be talking um, about these two topics, um, which I know are exciting topics. People usually have opinions about these two topics, uh, which is why I chose them. Um, and so we're going, to, we're going to spend some time talking about these things. And what I want us to do today in class as we are going over these topics is to go back and think about all the things we've talked about in this class so far and apply those thought processes, those systems, whatever, to the topic and see if we can't kind of figure out how, how those things would apply. So, for example, if we remember, we go back through the term. Uh, I'm, I'm not using relativism as a or, or the, the, the religious stuff we talked about at the very beginning of the term as systems. Although, maybe we should. Let's throw those up here, too. Let's throw those up here, too. So let's talk about religion, relativism, and then we talked about egoism. And then what did we talk about? Do you remember? Utilitarianism, or we'll just say utility. And then, Kant. Kant. I can't remember what we talked about. <laughs> Kant. And then, uh, and then after Kant, we went to rights. And finally, virtue ethics. Socrates and Aristotle. Um, that, by the way, is a pretty good list of stuff. Right? That's a good terms worth of interesting stuff to talk about. So. Uh, if nothing else, you guys should be pretty pretty excited about just the list of of things that we've covered. We've had a pretty good term. Talked about a pretty good amount of stuff. Um, before we start this, though, I should really quickly ask: Does anybody have any questions about virtue ethics? The stuff that we talked about last week that you wrote about um, over this last week. Obviously, I haven't looked at your papers yet, but does anybody have any thoughts or questions or concerns about virtue ethics? 
I mean, I looked at your responses about sort of like the idea of a living well versus a good life and practice in terms of making perfect. Uh, there were some interesting responses there. Um, particularly, I thought, on the practice makes perfect question. Um, I was struck, I thought it was interesting how many of you believe that you can, in fact, become a good person by doing something, even if you don't like it, doing good things, even if you don't like it. Um, and I kind of wanted to ask, I, 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 instead of asking it on every single question, uh, sort of post, uh, rather asking you guys in class, are we sure that's true? I mean, I, I feel like, actually, one, one, I did ask one, one student because uh, there was a very sort of clear example. The, uh, the example in his, in his post was, if I wake up every morning and I want to kill everybody, but I don't, then I'm practicing being a good person, and therefore I become a good person. And I kept thinking, really? <laughs> like, and I actually responded, like, are you sure? Like, if you wake up every morning seriously considering killing everyone, or so, even one person, are you really a good person, even if you don't kill anybody? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's more complicated than that. I think that right, intentions and thoughts and so on matter. And so we may go through the motions of behaving correctly, but that doesn't mean that we're good. Right? It might mean we're not bad, but it seems like maybe we're not good either. I don't know. Do any of you guys watch? Oh, wait. Go ahead, Tracy. What are you going to say? I think that's a, a more of a screen for what I, I think that the, the story was more more how most people approach it. So you, you feel a certain way. You're like, you know what? I'm not going to act that way. I'm just going to. I'm going to do something uh -huh. differently. So having a thought and not acting on a thought is not the same thing as having a thought and acting to the contrary. And so it's more you're acting, you're it's active. So you're doing something as opposed to not doing anything. Not killing somebody every day is okay, it's admirable. <laughs> is it? It's, it's kind of easy. Like nobody gets a medal for that, right? right. Yay, you didn't kill anyone today. Right? But do people do that? I mean, I, so yeah. But but this is but I think it's an important point. Like people who go out and do things in which they help people do those things for reasons, um, and the whatever the reasons are, right? Some people wake up and like, man, I'm just going to go and help some people today because it makes me feel good. And that sounds like a pretty egoistic response, but all right. And then some people are going to wake up every morning and they're gonna say, I'm going to go out and help some people because someday I might need help. All right. That's also a little bit egoistic, but maybe some utility stuff there. That might be what's best for everybody and so on. And some people might go out and say, I'm going to help some people today, even though I really don't want to, because whatever reason X is. It could be because somebody really wants you, right? You're trying to impress someone because you are um, hoping to get into heaven because you are uh, worried about a, a job interview, right? Where they're going to find out about these things. Who knows, right? And so you might do things that you don't want to do, but for reasons that you do want to do. And so in, in, in some way, you actually are doing what you want to do, which is go out and help people, even though your reasons might not be just because it's good. And that's a quite, well, my question is, is that person good, right? Is there a distinction between the person who, I do a good thing because it's good, and I do a good thing because, well, other reasons. Is one of those people good and the other person just neutral? I don't know. It seems like maybe. 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 There's a lot of other factors. So well, consistency, yeah. the more you do it, you can become good. It's particular, maybe not to yourself, maybe not internally, but externally, the results are still the same thing. Ah, 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 results. Okay, so if I got this, got this right, so you're, you, what you're really saying is you might not actually, a person who does good things, even though they don't want to, might not actually become good, but they're doing good things, so who cares? Okay, but that's not what the question was, right? And that's important 
for us in the terms of this class, because we do care. We do care if the person is good, right? Good, depending on however you want to define that, or not, right? In, in, in essence, what we're asking are, and a lot of people said, you know, you get judged by your actions. That was a common sort of statement that showed up in the, in the things, right? Because nobody knows what you're thinking. But we know what we're thinking. And at some point, is there a question about whether thoughts are more important, less important, or equally as important as actions? Or do motives matter? Right? And we talked about this when we talked about utility and sort of moral luck and this idea that, you know, Robin Hood, well, not even Robin Hood because he's intentional, but people who do things accidentally that end up doing leading to good things or people who do things accidentally that end up leading to bad things. Are they actually good or bad people? Are they responsible? Or I think Crystal made a, was very strongly in favor of like, it matters why you do a thing. Motives matter. Intention matters, I think is what you said. Right? So intentions do matter. And if intentions matter, then they do matter all the time. And the person who's doing a good thing because his boss tells him to or because he is, I don't know, tired of getting yelled at or because he's trying to improve his customers, right? That's a common thing with businesses, right? When they donate stuff, right? Presumably it's because they want people to come and they're trying to impress customers, right? Potential customers. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to such and such store because, oh, they donated – 100 bucks to the local softball team, and the kids got to play in the t-shirts, and yay, so I'm going to go there. That's the whole point of those sponsorships, right, to impress customers. So are those people who run those businesses actually good people, or are they doing a good thing for selfish reasons? Let's get a little bit of both on this, but again, I, I keep going back to the consistency of it. We've done anything, the story, but if you do something over and over again, it almost becomes habit forming. And at that point, I mean, you look at the, um, the father in law, mm -hmm. he became a, uh, not a rabbi, but he had disciples himself because he, he, he went so far removed from the character he was that it's hard to argue that he didn't become good. It doesn't, being good doesn't mean that you don't have bad, that, that negative thoughts or bad thoughts. It, you overcome them. Okay. And you find find your means. Okay. Basically. Okay, so again, just to repeat for, for people in the cheap seats, the idea that consistency and repetition can actually make a person a good person because they overcome those, those negative thoughts and they end up being positive thoughts at the end of the day, maybe. Positive intentions in addition to positive actions. Crystal? They do something they don't really want to do over and over again. I wonder if at some point they become upset and bitter. Like, I don't want to do this. Right. So, so, right, and that's kind of, kind of my point is that it's what you're saying, I think, is that there has to be an original desire to do those things that they don't want to do. Right. He wanted to do the thing that ultimately was the good thing, right. even though he might not have realized it. So maybe the idea that somebody actually, so people don't actually act opposed to their own desires. They just have multiple potentially conflicting desires and they act on one of them. <laughs> I'm just trying to, to get, with, get where you are. Um, I don't know that there's a right answer here, as is often the case. What's going on, Ms. Tony? What's up? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Really, should I just put a sign on the door? Paper has been canceled, right? Just let let everybody know before they, as soon as they walk in, because that's the most thing they're most concerned about. <sighs> you guys, no, you guys are hurting my feelings now. You make me want to sign the paper again. No, no, no. You don't no, care definitely. about anything else. <laughs> All right, I'm not. I'm going to move on. I'm not going to be, belabor the practice thing. Um, I think it's an interesting question about whether. Uh, Morality uh, is is focused on actions or intentions. Um, certainly, we have a tendency to say to forgive people when bad things happen when they didn't mean it, um, and to applaud people who try but fail to do good things. Right? And so, clearly, there seems to be much more emphasis on intentionality than on actual results. Typically, Chris, what are you going to say? Can it be both? 
can it, what both what? What are the two options? Yeah, obviously they both matter some, but it, it seems based on the way we actually behave in our real life that we tend to put more weight on intention than on action. All right, because again, like if you try real hard to save somebody and then you fail, right? I mean, you look at the firemen in 9-11, right, who ran up in the buildings and tried to save people. We don't blame them like, oh, I can't believe you didn't save that one guy. Right? We're like, no, that was so great that you tried, even though you didn't save everybody, right? We applaud intention. What's that? Well, not all of them, right? I mean, right. And and so and we, we really respect those people who, even though their actions ended up being futile, their intentions were really, really brave and valid and, and, and good. And so, um, and similarly, right, if somebody, if I, uh, gosh, I don't know, uh, if I stumble and knock someone down the stairs, right, accidentally, then no one's going to write, oh, you're such a jerk, you go pushing people downstairs. Right? I'm like, well, no, I'm, the results were somebody fell down the stairs and I pushed them, but it, I didn't mean to. Very rarely will somebody think that I'm a bad person because I accidentally stumbled and knocked them aside, right? So intentions seem to be more important than actions, typically. So, so we're inconsistent, you're saying. That's probably true. But I'm just, I mean, just generally, if I were to... If I had to weigh the two, it seems like intentions get more weight than actions do. That's all. Um, and if that's true, then it seems like it's hard to say the, you know, the the Scrooge guy who gives the turkey at the end of the play because he wants to is doing a nicer thing than the Scrooge guy who gives the turkey away because somebody badgered him into it. Right. I don't know. And so it seems like that matters. But maybe if he keeps giving a turkey away, even though he hates it, maybe eventually he comes to like it. I don't know. Yeah. I, only because if he wants to actually want to do it. I feel like if there's no desire to want. But the desire can come from the adulation he gets. But then the adulation comes. Wants that adulation again, so he starts to see. It doesn't no, matter when it reason comes. Change, yeah, no, no. It doesn't matter when different. it comes. It just has to, at some point, have the you have to have the desire to want okay. it to yep. be different. Yep. Agreed. And somebody somewhere has got to appreciate the action rather than the intent. Fair enough. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to move on because we got lots of stuff to talk about tonight. Uh, so I want us to talk about abortion, which, um, and I've chosen that because it is the, according to, I don't know, some poll somewhere, some, some scientific research somebody, somewhere, it's the single most contentious thing in the country. Uh, it is closest of all of the things that people are arguing about these days. It's the close, most closely split 50-50 topic in the country, with capital punishment being a close second. Right. Uh, that's why we're going to talk about those two things. And so my suspicion is that most people in here have at least some opinion about both of these topics. And so that's why I want to talk about those two things. Right? If I were to if we're talking about gun rights or something, eh, maybe you're just like, I don't care. Right. No, no, whatever. As long as nobody's shooting at me, I don't care. Right. Uh, but I, but I, but most people have have thoughts about these two things. That said, a lot of people have very, very strong feelings about these two things, uh, and I recognize that, and I recognize that's potentially a source of stress for people in this room, um, and I don't want this to be a place where people are stressed, even on the last day. Right, <laughs> you can come. Don't have to worry about coming back next week. Um, but I want us to be able to have a good discussion and nobody to feel bullied or attacked or told that they're wrong or whatever. So I just need us all to be aware of the fact that you may disagree strongly with some other people in this room, uh, and that's okay. That there's no no one gets anything. There's no prize for being right tonight. Uh, we're just going to talk and we're going to try our best. I hope. To again utilize the things that we've talked about so far this term to approach these these two topics um, from a place of intellectualism and uh, sort of rational thought rather than sort of gut reaction 
right? or uh, or just emotion. Not that emotion has no place, but I don't want us to come from just emotion. Yes? Can we can we do this? If at any point you feel like you can't anymore, you're allowed to leave. Right? No one's no one's no one's trapped except me. I can't go. Um, so. To start us off, first of all, I have put on the class website, you may want to look at this at some point or not, it's up to you. Uh, you can even look at it right now if you want, um, if you have a device that will connect to the series of tubes known as the interwebs. Um, this is a, a, actually a really cool website called procon.org, um, and they don't take any sides on anything. They have a, a whole bunch of different uh, topics, and they just list pros and cons. Right. Uh, arguments for and arguments against, um, all sorts of stuff. And I've listed, I, I just put the link here because it's pretty interesting stuff. It's good reading and it's nice to be educated about these things, particularly if you claim to have a strong opinion. Right? What, I, what, I, what makes me nuts, two things make me nuts. One, uh, well, I'll just talk about one. The, the one that makes me nuts the most is when people claim to have a strong feeling about, ah, oh, I'm totally against Vegans, they suck, right? I hate vegans. And then uh, they don't really know much about being a vegan or what it really is and so on. Like, that's the most annoying thing ever, right? So uh, you, if you're going to have an opinion, it should be an educated one. Um, so this is a great a great spot for that. Uh, so let's, who wants to start us off? Abortion and your thoughts thereon. And just so we're clear, right, we're talking about... Um, I think we're talking about the most controversial version of abortion, right? We're not, notice, I, I didn't say, hey, let's talk about murder. Everybody has strong feelings about murder, right? Because everybody has strong feelings about murder and they're all on the same side, right? That's not interesting. Uh, similarly, almost no one believes that, um, like, aborting a eight month and 29 day fetus is a good idea, right? Nobody really feels that way. So let's not even talk about that. I can make an argument that there's not really much difference between that and a two-day-old fetus, but let's not worry about that too much right now. So let's stick to what people are actually arguing about. And that is like f uh, halfway through, right? First, early second trimester, maybe even late second trimester abortions. Yes, that's what we're talking about and people's opinions thereof. Well, that's what this is. Well, <laughs> let's let's okay. We'll, we'll we'll let's break that down a little bit more carefully. Um, but before we get to that, let me also add that we're not talking here. I think about uh, abortion in cases. Uh, well, I guess we can if we want to. Okay, I won't add any more restrictions. I was going to say in terms of like rape and incest and so on, but maybe that's part of the discussion, and so I won't I won't rule that out. We'll say it's part of the discussion. All right, Tracy, you started us off here. You're, you did, you did. Um, and, and let's also add this one little caveat real quick. Uh, Tracy and Tayshawn and I are allowed to talk about this too, right? There's, uh, you're welcome. I just want to make that clear, right? There are people who think that men have no say in this. Um, I don't think that's true. I think that we're allowed to at least discuss it. Right? I do think there should be more women involved in the discussion than there are currently in in politics, right? I mean, you've all seen the picture of the most recent, like, the 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 meeting of the I don't know the medical health committee in Congress, and it's all white men, right? And there are no women involved at all. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, so, so I, my point is not that there should be all men, but there may be. It's okay for men to talk about this too. So, Tracy's going to start us off. What do you mean by the difference between abortion and the right to choose? Well, well, the answer to that is, legal, yeah. Sorry. Was, should it be legal? Mm -hmm. And two, should the woman have a right to choose? Should it be an individual choice? So, but aren't those the same thing? No. So, okay. So, should abortion be legal? And should women be able well, yeah, I guess it's kind of 
to choose. Yeah, right. If if you if if you don't make it legal, then obviously women can't choose it in the so same way. Because that is, you're absolutely right. That is one question. But the, the other portion of that is, um, then is it morally right to to uh, have the vote? I can. So you're saying there are two questions here. Yes. Is it legal and is it morally right? Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Ah, um, is it so? Is should abortion be legal and is abortion moral? Let's say, just for abbreviation's sake. Um, let's pretend, for the purposes of our argument here, those are the same question, for just for right now. Because there, there are probably all sorts of technical and legal bits about the law and la 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 la. Um, let's pretend that if it is moral, it should be legal. And if it should be legal, it must be moral. Yes? We know there are differences between legality and morality. Uh, we know that there are laws that are immoral, and we know that there are things that are moral that aren't laws. Um, but let's just pretend that's one question for the sake of simplicity tonight. Okay. Because we don't have an unlimited amount of time. Is abortion moral? Is it ethically acceptable to abort a pregnancy? It should be. Well, it is legal. Right? Is it? It should be moral, or it is moral? Because there's no right. We're talking here in like theoretical terms. Like if you, there's nobody who's like saying, like pushing down the right. Like no, it's, it's not going to be moral. And you're like, oh, it should be. No, it either is or it isn't. So let's go. Ah, relativism. Yay, Myrna wins a point for bringing up relativism for the first time. No, right? That's not the discussion we're having. Right. So relativism is the classic, well, it's up to you. It's what you think. But that's not, right? We talked back about relativism way back in the day, and we said relativism doesn't help us solve anything. If it's up to everybody individually, then why, why limit it to abortion? Why not make everything up to everybody? All right? You get to go out and take whatever you want. Well, because I think it's fine. Why don't tough? You know, right? Let's, we're, we're trying to establish morality of an action morality of an action. And it seems like, based on all these other things we've talked about, that can be determined regardless of individual people's opinions. Yes? Yes? Myrna, does that? For example? So can it, and by it I mean abortion, be universalized. Can we imagine a universe in which everyone was allowed to get an abortion if they wanted one? No, not everybody has to get an abortion, but everybody can if they want to. Well, but that's already true, right? Your, your parents, your mother could have aborted you, and she didn't. So presumably she didn't want to, and so here we are, right? So the that doesn't this wouldn't change at least in the United States, because there are other places where this is not true, right? But at least in the United States, universalizing access to abortion. I know access is a bad word because of course that's not true, and that's where we get into all the problems with legality and morality, right? In in fact, right, abortion is totally legal in the United States, but it's really hard to get one. All right, depending on where you live. Um, and so because people have certain legislators have made it sort of de facto illegal because it's just really hard to do. Right? So, but that's not our point, right? We're not talking about the legality. We're trying to decide whether it should be more morally acceptable, right? Yes. Or should it not be, right? I'm not I'm I'm asking whether it should be. Ms. Tony's, we, we, we've got, but, but she hasn't given us any evidence yet, but okay, we're going we're gonna to hold on. So, back to Myrna's question. Can abortion be universalized? And I think that, yeah, right? I think we can imagine a world in which everybody got an abortion, and it wouldn't be the end of civilization or reality. It wouldn't somehow negate the whole point of pregnancy or the function, right? If it did, 
right? Can we universalize a world where everyone gets an abortion, has to, or like something like that? Well, no, right? That would bring about the end of society, and that's not okay. But can it be universalized such that everybody who wants one can get one? That seems to work. So we've, we've applied some relativism and said, well, that's not going to help us. We've applied some Kantianism, and we seem to have at least a direction. Right? The other piece, of course, we have to keep in mind for Kant, not just can it be universalized, what's the other piece of Kant that we have to keep in mind? What's that? Uh, that sounds like utility. What's the other piece of, right, there's the, in the, the kingdom of ends, right? Yeah, it's not just universalization of the maxim, it's also, are we treating, is anyone being treated as an end to a means? What, did, what would Kant say about that? Yeah. Yes, what? Yeah, <laughs> Try, kind of trying. So, so, okay, yeah, it seems like we could universalize access to abortion without being, bringing about the end of the world, but, but, or is the fetus being used as a means to my to the mother's end of a better life or a more convenient life or something like that <laughs> or or more taxes no it's the other way around right yeah you get you pay less taxes if you have more kids <laughs> sorry well, okay so so that maybe is a problem for Kant right potentially Okay, Ms. Tony, what are you, you've, been, you've been dying to say something. Say something. Well, I mean, even what I was trying to say. Say it again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really should depend on the person and why. They're trying to Let's think of it this way, right? What if I put another example in here? What if I say murder, right? Is it okay to murder a person? And you're probably going to say, well, you're probably not going to say, well, it depends, right? It you're... depends on the screen. Okay, so, okay, so now we're, now we're redefining the word abortion, right? We're not actually to changing the, the, like, the the sort of we're not saying it's really up to you or the circumstances we're saying well what is it what do you really mean by abortion and that's why I was trying to aim it at that first to second trimester thing right and we could add some complications okay okay so let's hmm. Hmm, okay. Does anybody have, okay, all right, so we've got to look at circumstances. Thing, everyone, keep thing in mind. Crystal. I was going to say, I think that's the issue that So you're saying, and again, I'm just repeating for recording's sake, the, the perspective is that, that everybody's got competing interests here, right? All of the individuals involved, because there are at least three people involved, yes? And again, and, right, and I've written them down there, right? There's the child, there's the mother, there's a the father, uh, minimum. There might be other people involved, but there are at least those three people involved. And I'm, I'm being really not careful with my language here, but I'm doing it on purpose because I'm echoing you guys. Okay, so uh, we're going to get to that in a second. But so, so you're saying, it sounds like, we have to keep these three things in mind whenever we make any decision. However, when we talk about something being ethically appropriate, we often don't worry about circumstances, not really, right? We talk about an action being right or wrong, right? Like right? murder, it's bad. Well, that guy's really a jerk. And it's still probably pretty bad, right? Um, 
uh, if the this is and this is a con this is a thing that comes up all the time when we talk about abortion. Like some of you always say, well, we got to think about whether the the mom or the or the parents are are capable of caring for the child. Right? Well, God, that's a hard thing to determine. What do you mean by that? Like I've seen people who care, take care of children, multiple children on one income and not a very high income, and they survive. I'm sure. Right. There's also the adoption issue. I've also seen really, really wealthy people raise really crappy kids. Right. I mean, they survived, but they're not very good children. Right. So, like, what do we mean by capable of taking care of? Is there a is there a hard deadline or a cutoff? Like I make twenty three thousand dollars a year. I am capable of raising a child. I make. I make twenty two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars a year. I'm incapable of raising a child. Right. Is that does that make sense? Like there's no I don't even know how to address that, I guess, is my point. Right. And if we're making these sorts of qualifiers, right, then, then how do we actually apply them? And if we can't apply them, then they're no good. So when we talk about circumstances, I mean, we can I think we can get into some of those bits, like the health of the child. Right. If the if the fetus is going to be born and then only live a week for example, or maybe born, I mean, you know, encephalitis, there are all sorts of horrible things that can happen in, in, in pregnancy, right? And so children can be born in ways that their lives really are short and miserable, and maybe it's worth, worth but, but I don't know that that falls under the category of what we're talking about here. Okay? Um, the health of the mother, right? Is it, what about the circumstances where it is, it is really, really dangerous? to carry the baby all the way to term and to deliver it. What do we think about then? Well, it sounds like we're starting to float a little, little way towards utility, right? We've got to sort of balance the greatest good for the greatest number, right? If we're talking about, um, you know, the, possibly the death of the mom for the sake of the child, people are going to make different decisions there, right? Some people are going to say, well, I, don't know, I can have another kid, but I can't have another me. Alternatively, some people are going to say, oh, my baby's the most important thing. I'm willing to die, right? That sort of thing. And that seems to be, right, because that's one for one. But maybe it's more complicated than that. What are you going to say, Tayshaun? Yep. Mm. Uh, well, maybe. I mean, it depends on kind of why. Right? Why? If is does egoism play a part here? I mean, it seems like there are a couple different ways we could look at it as an egoistic action, right? Um, in the sense of like, hi, I'm a mom, I'm pregnant, I'm gonna have a child, I don't really want to. Well, there you go, right? If that person says, I don't want to have a child, and so I'm not going to, and what's best for me is what's right, well, that seems to be egoism, right? Um, or yeah, if, if it's dangerous for me, right? What's best for me? So if it's best for me, I should be, not only should it be legal, it's actually moral. It is morally appropriate for me to have an abortion to save myself. But we're not saying, relativism would be me saying, like if you were pregnant, relativism says, you decide, because I have no opinion. Egoism says, if you're pregnant, you pick what's best for you, all right? I pick what's best for me in my case. You pick what's best for you in your case is different than nobody gets to decide for anybody. In fact, in an egoism, and if, if the world were run by egoism, maybe I'm a doctor and I say, not only, yeah, not, or, or maybe I'm going to say, I'm going to perform an abortion because otherwise you will be in danger, whether you like it or not, all right? because that is what's best for you, and I'm going to do it, because that is the morally correct thing to do. Does that make sense? As opposed to relativism, where I would just come up and say, what do you want to do? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, there, yeah, there is a distinction between those two things. Trace? So, when we use the right, when we start thinking of right, yeah. we have to go back to what universal rights are. So. Mm -hmm. What are the rights of the child? Oh. Okay, so let's, <laughs> there we go. There's the real question. 
right? This we can we can we can bounce around in utilitarianism and Kant, right, for a while here, and maybe come up with some really interesting discussion and so on. But this discussion mostly seems to revolve around the idea of human rights, and most importantly, which of these three people are humans? Right, and that's where the argument tends to fall. Which of these three people? So, right, we all have a right to live. And you'll see that, right? If you look through your, yes, haha, -ha, right? Con number one on the procon.org site is abortion is murder because killing human beings is wrong. Innocent human beings is wrong. That's the second half of today's class. Um, the, uh, and there's, and yeah. I don't, I'm not picking a side here. <laughs> it makes me feel so warm and fuzzy inside. We were like, whatever it was you said, I wasn't listening. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, what? That's the question, right? That's the question. I wrote child up here, and I knew it when I wrote it that I was loading the, the question here, right? When we think about it in terms of child, mother, father, from a human rights perspective, all of their rights are equally valuable because they're all human beings, yes? It doesn't matter that one's younger than another or one's a man and one's a woman or any of that stuff, right? They're human beings, they all have equal rights. The question really then becomes, when is it a fetus and when is it a child? <laughs> Before it's a fetus, it's not anything. No, that is the fetus. Well, right, but right, we're not going to go far back. Right, there are the people. There are the people who will get wacky and say, like, you know, ever, well, I don't want to get crude, but right, the sperm is not. We're, you can kill as many sperm as you want, and that's not abortion, right? <laughs> and same thing with eggs, yes? We're not going to go back that far. But once they meet, at that magical moment called conception, right, it becomes a fetus. Yes, thank you for saying that. <laughs> they, they meet, one, the, the sperm fertilizes the egg, right, in case we don't remember basic biology. Okay, good, good. And it is a fetus. I just had this conversation with my 10-year-old with my last week. Yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. Uh, <laughs> That is not why I shaved my beard. I'm not even sure how those two things would be connected. <laughs> I sit you down. I'm going to talk about the birds and bees, but first I have to shave. I'm not sure. Uh, no, I can tell you why I shaved in a minute if you want, but it's not related to that. Um, questions. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah. Fetus. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. So, so, so what are the arguments here, right? I mean, you've probably heard them before, but just so we're clear. What is, the, what is the real discussion here? Because it seems like once murder, murder, murder. <laughs> scared me for a second, like you were murder. Okay, so we've got the progression, right? The sperm and the and the egg, they meet, boom, fetus. Eventually, a child happens, right? And it seems like at some point, right? Some people are going to take that little slider of of conception to birth, and and the point where it's a human, and we're going to slide that thing back and forth. Some people are going to say that life begins at conception, which is inarguable, right? Those cells are alive, yes, and so unborn babies are human from the moment that they are conceived, because they are living cells, right? And some people are going to say, actually, a baby isn't a baby, a human being baby, until it's born, because, right, we don't count birthdays from conception, right? We don't make you pay extra taxes when you're pregnant, right? Can't get welfare if when you're pregnant. Well, not but not the same kind, right? Not for the same reasons. You um you can't um right. You're not counted in the census when you're a fetus. Um, there are all sorts of things that point to the fact that that you're not a human being until you're born. And then there are other people who are more in the middle, right? Where Okay, there's you're certainly not a human being at that first moment when you're just literally two cells big, but you're probably a human being before the actual moment of being born because that's a weird dividing line, 
right? Like here you're inside somebody, but you're exactly the same thing as here you're outside of somebody, right? Just say divided by a single day or even a single moment, right? Like right up until the second of, of emerging, you're not a human being. And then suddenly you are like, boom, that seems weird. So there's got to be some point in the middle for a human being. But what is that point? Crystal, you've been very patient. Okay, so some people say, right, that's that's a possibility. We could go, baby has a heartbeat, which is really early, by the way. Yes, it's very, very, very early. And most people do not have abortions before the fetus has a heartbeat because A, people don't know they're pregnant for some period of time. And then B, it's a lot of people like to think about it before they just run off and do a thing. And so... So that seems to be a complicating, and that's certainly a place where some, some people who are opposed to abortion would like to push it. Like, we're going to make it as hard as possible, as early as possible. I mean, some people want it to be at conception. Like, boom, it's a human being, no abortion, that's killing a person, and we don't like killing people. And some people are saying, okay, fine, we're not going to make it that early, but then we're going to make it as hard as we can, right? We're going to push it up as far as we can. And that's where you see pictures of, of little fetuses that look awfully human, right, in the sense that they've got little budding arms and things and so on. And, and so, look, it's a person, and it's got a heartbeat, right? That's oh, a person. And then it's got brain activity, that's oh, a person, and so on. So, so are we, and just I'm just trying to get a, a measure of the room, do we feel that that is the most important question? When is it, because right, we're all sort of in agreement that killing innocent people is not okay. And I'm just asking this as a question. I'm not stating it. Killing people, innocent people, is not okay. And so it really depends on when the fetus is a person. Comfortable with that? Comfortable with that? Comfortable? Comfortable? Yeah. Why am yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss Tony? Well, I really do think of killing people. What do you mean it depends on the person? The mother. Well, I don't think it should matter. Well, it shouldn't matter. I'm, I'm okay with that. Too. You're okay with that? Okay. Because <laughs> okay. it sounded like what you were going to say is that you should be able to have an abortion right up until the end. No. Because there are people who feel that way. First trimester, again, that's really early, right? That's 12 weeks. It's, I mean, three months. Well, depending on who, some people think that that's true, and some people don't. Some people don't find out that they're doing it. Okay. There are three trimesters total. Twelve, well, 12 weeks is three months. Whatever. <laughs> it matters. It matters. Right? So, all right. All right, let's let's have a little calendar, calendar training, real quick, right? So pregnancy is nine months long, broken into three trimesters of three months each. It's 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 really it's 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 more like thirty six to thirty eight, right? That's actually the length of pregnancy. Well, okay. Well, I mean, it's it's obviously it's variable, right? But it's typically three trimesters or three months, right? That's the that's the generally the breakdown. Okay. So, and if you're going to go into weeks, then you're looking at twelve to thirteen for the first trimester, for each trimester. So then you get to thirty-nine if you go thirteen, right? Yes, we're okay with that math. Okay. Um, so when does life begin? When does life begin? Thank you, Trace. Thank you. Well, you're not going to, that's the problem is you can't look that up. You can't just look it up because everybody, because there's no, nobody has scientifically decided. Well, let me, let me take that back. We have decided when life begins. Life begins when, when they were always alive. The cells were always alive, right? The egg was alive. The sperm was alive. They came together and, and made another thing that was alive. That, by the way, has its very own DNA, right? It is a unique individual from a, from a genetic perspective, right? It does not have the DNA of the father or the mother. It has its own DNA at that point. So, and it is a living thing in the same way that your finger is a living thing. 
right? I have the cells. Each individual cell in your finger is alive, and they can die, those cells. And, this, and so can that fetus die. But we don't weep when one of our skin cells dies or, or, or whatever, right? We don't have anybody complaining about, oh my gosh, you really exfoliated really, really powerfully today and killed a whole lot of skin cells, <laughs> right? So, well, I mean, it's, it's silly, but there's a, there's a correlation, right? The cells are cells. And so, skin cells? Sure, yes, right? Skin cell can only grow up to be a skin cell. And it will, that will be as much as it ever accomplishes in its short life. I don't know exactly how long a skin cell lives. I know that in seven years, all of the cells in your body have been replaced. You are made up of entirely new things than you were seven years ago. All right. Like shaving, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's why we have things like cancer, right? Because everything's constantly dying and regrowing, and things when mutations and blah blah blah. I mean, cancer now it sucks, um, but it is what it is. Uh, what was I going to say? Ah, so cells, right? There are a lot. There's no question about that. Life does begin at conception. A human, right? A, a new organism is created right then. But again, the question is not whether life begins at conception. It's whether a human life begins at conception. Is it a human being then, when it's made of two cells? That's a good question. That's a good question. Right. So that's I think I think that's Christine. You guys are saying the same thing, right? Two human beings, when they create a thing, they create a human, right? Because they're not going to create anything else. And the only option for those two cells is is a human being. Well, careful, right? Because that's not the only possible outcome, right? Some, some of those things, in fact, the, a huge number of those things, I think, it's, I think the science is about a third of those little pairs of cells that get turned into, right, that potentially are gonna become a person, just die. Okay, that's one, one way off topic. Okay, so, all right, so one, way off topic. Two, as Tracy said, illegal. Three, biologically impossible, all right? Things, things that are of different species cannot Right? Only, and, and you can tell if things are close enough because they, they can, right? Horses and donkeys can actually right, create offspring, although typically those offspring are sterile. Yeah, well, I never, get, I never get tired of having this conversation. <laughs> yeah, interestingly, that didn't come up. <laughs> uh, Chelsea, yes? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, sure. The science is complicated. That's right. The science is complicated because science is always complicated. And we almost certainly don't know everything that there is to know, right? Which is the nature of science. Well, it's not changing. It's yeah, our knowledge is expanding, or and sometimes and sometimes not expanding. Sometimes, right? We realize we were wrong about something, right? We're like, oh, oh, yep, strike. Okay, tear that page out of the book. Um, but but anyway, so but but the stuff we do know, right? We do know some things about this. We know that about a third of all fetuses just die on their own. Right? We know that, uh, and and again. Sometimes without anybody knowing, and, it, and and so those things were never going to become human. Right? And and again, even the language we use, they become human, which suggests that there's something else first, right? They aren't, right? That those two cells are not a human being. 
an example. This is actually a, a science fiction writer came up with this uh, not too long ago. It's a really interesting sort of thought process. Imagine there's a fire. Building is on fire. Dangerous. Ah, people have to get out of the building, have to get out of the building. You are alone in like a science lab that for some reason has a jar with a little like two or four cell fetus in it and a baby, like a six month old baby ah, crying because it's hot and it's fire. You can only save one of them. Which one do you save? You can only save one. It's a rule. It's the rules. For some reason, whole thing's about to collapse. You like the ceiling is literally about to fall in, and you can only reach for one because they're too far away to grab both. Which one do you save? <laughs> Which wait, wait, what? <laughs> Sacrifice for living well. Sure, yeah, right, right, right. The question about the greater good, but this isn't about the greater good because it's still just one on one, right? In theory, if they're both human beings, then they're both equally valuable, and so it's a coin flip. It doesn't matter which one you pick, right? You're, you have to sacrifice one and save one. They're both, they're both equal, so it doesn't matter, right, according to utility. But of course you're going to – well, I shouldn't say of course. Is anybody in here going to save the fetus? <laughs> right. In in my in my limited in my limited <laughs> testing of this example, no one has ever chosen the fetus over the baby, right? except for Tyshawn, <laughs> and I don't think Tyshawn meant it. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> That's right. That's where all the silliness comes out. It um it, it the baby always gets picked because the baby presumably has more value than the fetus. For whatever. But why is it an impulse? Because you can see. What if? What if we advance the fetus three months, four months? Right. What if we advance it four months? So you can see it. It looks like it's a little person. Okay. Well, but but you know this one is already um, has already birth to give birth. This one is still right. The the point is this right. The baby is clearly a human being. Yes, without any argument. Well, at least the numeral that requires that the fire is going to hurt. Right. Yeah. Well, the fire is going to hurt both. Both. Right. Well, let's be careful. The fire is going to damage both, right? It's possible that the fetus isn't going to feel pain. Because it's, there's a, you can't feel pain until you have a brain, right? Well, let's, let's pick. Let's say it's before that it has a brain, right? We can move it around. We can slide the scale. I said, right. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that right. The it's it's alive. There's no arguing that. But that doesn't mean, in the same way that the tree outside is alive, right? And so that doesn't mean it feels pain. But but that's all I'm all I'm saying when I say that the fetus is alive, is that it is alive in the same way that a tree is alive, right? It is living thing, okay? But that doesn't mean that it's a human being, and it certainly doesn't mean it's capable of feeling pain. And so, and we have to be careful about pain as, as our indicator, right? What if that was a baby who had some weird genetic di disorder that it was incapable of feeling pain? Would that mean it was okay to let it be crushed in the fire because it didn't feel any pain? Yeah. I still don't think it would matter. I think, uh, okay, wait, Chelsea's got her hand up. Chelsea, go ahead. <laughs> Chelsea. So interesting. Okay, so we've kind of changed topic here a little bit, changed subject, but that's all right. <laughs> so Chelsea's gone deep. Chelsea's gone deep into the utility barrel here, right? Because that is very much based on consequences. That argument, right? If we if we make abortion illegal, then people are going to get abortions anyway, but they'll be more dangerous, right? 
So in the grand scheme of things, it's better, causes less pain for fewer people or greater happiness for more people to just allow abortions to be legal so that people aren't getting hurt and, and so on and doing bad things. And again, that's very much focused not on whether the action itself of abortion is immoral, but on the consequences of making it legal or illegal, right? But we still haven't resolved that doesn't, right? That doesn't change the fact that abortion itself might be immoral, right? Like we're gonna go ahead and link it legal because, because we wanna keep people from doing it. But that's, that's, right? that's like saying, well, we might as well make drugs legal because you know, yeah. people, are, yeah. but not all of them. Right. Not yet. Not yet. What did you say? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. What about the guns? Oh, I, I see Jessica. What about the guns? Yeah, but what does that have to? Well, but but okay, but, but <laughs> no, that's not what Chelsea was saying, right? Chelsea was saying people are going to do it anyway. My point is that Chelsea is focusing on the fact that people are going to do it anyway, right? But that but that doesn't right. That's 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 the argument against all laws. So they can be safe. No, they can be safe. But again, again, that that's the argument against all laws. People are going to break the law, so why have laws at all? Right? Seems to be. Or let's just make everything legal, because people are going to do it anyway. Right? That doesn't seem like a very good argument, and it certainly doesn't make abortion ethical. That's not an argument for the ethical nature of abortion so much as it is, well, yeah, people are just going to do it anyway. So, but that's what we're here to do. Yeah, yeah. You. <laughs> but, but no, but no. People. Yeah, right. People, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea's. <laughs> we've all seen that movie, The Purge, right? <laughs> That's Chelsea's world. Everybody, yeah, kill who you want. I'm just gonna lock the door every night. I'll be fine. Um, yeah, right. That's not. That's not the way it works. But do they? Are you saying, <laughs> Crystal? Do, do they have the right? Does anybody have the right to kill anyone? Yes. It's worth noting that you're wearing a girl power hat, right? So, okay. <laughs> so you're about to say but, and so I wanted to remind you that you're wearing. <laughs> So that's not, that's an interesting thing that Taishan, you brought that up, and I it's this is kind of unrelated to the abortion thing, but I think it's interesting that kind of like the whole like you're a man, you shouldn't get to talk about abortion. There's also the you don't have any children, so you shouldn't get to talk about it, right? That's also not true, right? Having a child doesn't make you an expert about anything except cleaning up poop, right? That is the only thing that you are suddenly an expert on when you have a kid, right? And that's just, that's it. So just because you have a kid, and remember the first day when I drove out the poor, uh, the, the person who never came back, and I made the point about, right? Just because she never came back. And I didn't mean to do that, but my point was still valid, right? Just because you served in the armed forces doesn't make you an expert on, say, right, right. I don't remember exactly what we were talking about. The Muslim ban? Yeah, we're talking about the Muslim. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the point is true. Yeah. 
Um, okay, but we're getting off track, and we're, we have a limited amount of time. They can. I don't know if they can hear you. That's not the point. Um, <laughs> uh, what was my point? My point is that, right, blah, 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 blah. what was my point? Ah, so your point, Crystal, was that I played the sexy games lottery, right? Which is I had sex and I know what the consequences potentially are. And so when those consequences happen, no matter what sort of assurances I took or precautions that I took because sometimes they don't work, but I was careful and it just didn't happen. But okay, okay, okay. Oh, hold on. So, so I played the I played the sexy game. I rolled the dice. I lost the lottery. I'm pregnant now, and so now I'm stuck because I knew that those were the consequences, and I do not get to make any other choice, right? I had that choice back then. That's what you're saying? To whether or not to have sex. And now and now I have to deal with the consequences. No, that's it. That always works. So how can we find a But condoms don't always work. Nothing always works. Even with that, I was gonna say, even with that, it's still hundred percent. Miss Tony. So how come it will find a lot of What? <laughs> 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 Are you talking about the the one child program? Yeah. 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 But but that's that's a that different issue. Different issue. Different issue. Okay. So all right. So so okay. Right. That's a different issue, Mr. Tony. We can talk about that some other time if you'd like. But. So, 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 things we know, no matter how careful you are when you have sex, it's possible that you will be pregnant, right? Because things don't always work the way they're supposed to. There's always a chance. Okay, sure, sure. <laughs> but the things you meant to prevent that from happening don't always work the way they're supposed to. Two, not everybody makes the choice, right? Whether, whether or not, right, there's rape, but then there's also degrees of rape, right? And we see, and we've been seeing that in the news a lot recently, right? There's coercion, there's uh, all sorts of, I didn't really want to, but I felt like I had to, and, and so on, right? And so there's all that stuff too. But at the end of the day, why does that matter? I get to do, I get to, like, if I were to, If I go to court and tell them I have a seatbelt on, that's why I got the ticket. Why did you have a seatbelt on? Because I don't want to. Do you, pay that ticket. do you really believe that having sex is a choice like whether or not to wear a seatbelt is a choice? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Tyshawn's singing right now, but he's just, <laughs> he's obviously thinking something. <laughs> something. <laughs> There's a, there's a, I think, and I don't know the numbers here, and I'm not sure. What you, what you're really talking about is a poor people ban on sex, right? Because what you're talking about are people who can't afford to take care of children. Because, and and if we look at the, if we look at the pros and cons stuff here, we see right all sorts of stuff about. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, women who are denied abortions are more likely to become unemployed, to be on public welfare, to be below the poverty line, to become victims of uh, uh, where is it? Of uh, uh, victims of domestic violence and so on, right? And we're talking about we're talking about people who are not wealthy, right? By and large, who have children even though they weren't planning to, right? And so and whether they're potentially not married and so on. And so these people, these are having children or because they have been denied access to abortions. And then what people say is, well, they shouldn't have had sex in the first place. And you're not ever going to say that to wealthy people, right, or to people who are capable of having those children and can afford it, right? They might be surprised, like, oh, I wasn't expecting a child, but okay, cool. But 
to people for whom it really matters, you're saying to them, you guys can't have sex anymore, ever, because it might lead to pregnancy and you can't deal with the consequences anyway other than to have that child, which could lead to the, basically the end of your life. Not literally, but in maybe, right? That is a ban on sex for poor people. And it seems pretty rough to tell poor people you're not allowed to have sex, period. One, because that seems to be pretty significant violation of their like right to live and do the things they like to do. And two, because it's not gonna work anyway. People are going to have sex. That's just in the same way that people are gonna have abortions, even if you make them illegal, but more so. Right? People are going to have sex, they're always gonna have sex. And if you look at the pregnancy rate among kids and so on, and people who can't afford to have children and know it and still have sex, that's not because they're stupid or because they don't know that pregnancy happens. It's because they have, because people have sex. <laughs> it's very, very easy. It's really easy to look at, at, at people like that and say, you guys shouldn't, you should have known better. It's exactly what you said. Abused. So, and then there's always this. There's always this. So there's always this. I don't think that's who Crystal's talking about. I'm not right? So to so to sum up real quick, just because there's <laughs> uh, oh a registry. Oh like we should have for guns. Um all right. So so, okay, hold on, hold on. So, because there are people listening and they don't know what's going on. So, Crystal, Crystal's point is that, um, that people have too many abortions. They take advantage of the situation and they're not careful and then they have abortions. Okay. What? Okay, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Taxes do not pay for abortions and they never have. Never have. Nope. That, but that's not taxes. That's not taxes. State insurance. There is no such thing as state insurance. No, there isn't. No, that's that's. Husky is Husky is subsidized by state insurance. Yes, but right. That that outside of outside of the very very few people who are on Medicare and Husky. The, even if you're subsidized by like in the in the exchanges or Obamacare, that's still private insurance companies. That's that's all private insurance companies. So so very very. I will. I'm willing to grant. I mean, Husky is intentionally in, in, is aimed at children, and Medicare is aimed at gro really really old people. So very like hardly any. Maybe not zero dollars, but like hardly any dollars have ever gone to abortion. No. So I just want to make that clear, right? Because that's a big thing that gets said, like funding Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. None of the money that goes to Planned Parenthood goes to abortions. Okay, okay, well, okay, we're getting out of control here. Hold on, hold on. Quiet! Shh. The problem with having discussions sometimes we get a little ratty. Okay, but but there's a lot of crosstalk and nobody's hearing anybody. Um, I just had to, right, the money that goes to Planned Parenthood does not go to abortions, and insurance company going to abortions is is a different thing, But but people also, I mean, people spend lots and lots of your insurance money to do things, and that's what insurance money is for, right? That's the whole point of insurance money. Like the people who complain about, well, you can't spend insurance money on um, birth control pills because I don't want you to. Well, it's not up to you. That's not what insurance is, right? In the same way that I don't get to, I don't get to decide how you spend money. You know, I'll never need that. Well, that's not, again, what insurance money is for. Insurance is we all pay into a pot to help people who can't afford things. 
on their own, right? That's what insurance is. So um, you don't get to you don't get I'm to complain Ian about insurance. On that one. Sorry. I'm with whom? Okay, then, so, and that's the other piece. There's always the story, I'm surprised you only went with six. I always hear when we have this conversation, somebody's like, I know someone who had 15 abortions. That's not true. That's not true. They're wrong. <laughs> Anybody who says, I know somebody who had 15 abortions, I guarantee they're, that's not true. Didn't happen. I don't know, but it's not 15. Nobody's around going 15 abortions. Secondly, secondly, even if they are, who cares? If it's morally... If it's an ethical action, who cares how many times you do it? Do it every day for, if you're, for all I care, right? But why? Why not? If it's if it's an ethical action, do it. Walk, uh, go crazy. Think of all the ethical things you can do. Is there anybody saying, well, but only this many times? But if it's not an ethical action, then once is too many, right? So there's no. Why do we care if it's like, well, sure, between one and three is fine, but four to twelve, that's uh, like. We don't necessarily think it's just a fetus until like eight months pregnant. But we can't really say that it's a whole, like, I feel like you just try to find this, this middle ground. And we do, right? And we, we establish, we use the viability. So, so if I've got this right, if I've got this right, abortion is ethically okay, sort of, right? We're, we're okay with it, but we don't like it, right? Okay, well, I mean, if you're willing, if you're, that's fine. But if you're willing to allow it to happen even once, you're saying, it's ethically okay, but I don't like it, right? And I'm saying to you, tough, right? If you don't like it, but you think it's ethically okay, it's ethically okay. I don't like the Backstreet Boys. But if it's okay, if it's ethically okay to listen to the Backstreet Boys, then it's eth then it is, and you can listen to them all you want, right? The end. Yeah, it is either yes or no. That's my point. But why? That's my point, right? So even the people who are who are like it's ethical, but I don't like it. Still, I don't know why. But hold on, but, Tracy, go ahead. I agree, but then the opposite argument is, what about the right? Of the child. Yeah. Exactly. And because exactly. mothers, and I'm not making a judgment here either, I'm just making the argument. What, when does the right of the parent trump the right of the child? And that's the question. So, I mean, if you have everyone, when does the parent's the right to life exceed yeah. like the child's right to life? <laughs> exactly. Because if everyone has a right to life, then, then, there's, then there's no one above us. So, and I, I'm just repeating things so that everybody can hear, right? So, Christine, your point is that. It's not okay to kill a fetus, no matter how, no matter where it is, in the in the timeline. But right anywhere on the timeline. But your point is that a human being, particularly a woman, has the right to control what happens to her own body and to choose that, and that trumps that right to the fetus's life. And and Tracy's, well, but that's not, but that's. It, it, you can qualify it all what you want, but what you're saying is that the, human, that the woman's right to choose trumps the fetus's right to live. That's what you're saying. That, sure, 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 sure. But there's a choice. Okay, so you're saying that. And Tracy's saying, when does, at what point, is it always true or is there some different, is there some point on that scale where the fetus's right to live outweighs the right to choose? I mean, we, we can imagine them on a scale, right? So when it's like day one of pregnancy, mom's right to choose heavily outweighs fetus's right to live. And then maybe over the course of the pregnancy, the scales start to balance, and then eventually 
the fetus's right to live outweighs the mom's right to choose. Is that kind of what you're trying to say? No. Because we can't. Many women probably need to abortions, probably don't even understand that which they're probably under the premise that the, the, the child that they're carrying is not a human being until a certain point. And that's what I'm And that is why they're choosing that because you're, they're you're not going to find that answer. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Okay. Now, Christine, but you're. So, hold on, I'll try to let me just real quick. I'm sorry. You're, you're, you're obviously have some strong feelings about this. <laughs> but, but some of the things you're saying are simply true. It is just cells. It doesn't have any sensation. It can't feel anything, right? At certain points in the progression, right? So those are just, those are just statements. Those are facts, right? It doesn't have a, a nervous system until X amount of time, and so it literally can't feel things, right? And is a very strong argument. For. I mean, you're saying it's a human being from the moment of conception, but but there are lots of people who can argue differently. But lots of things have hearts that aren't humans, right? Dogs have heartbeats, but they're well. Okay, that's fine. But Christine, why then? If 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 lots of things have hearts but aren't humans, then why do you think that that is different. I mean, it's one thing to disagree, but in this class, you've got to be able to say, and here's why. All right? And I don't, and I. I, I and so we know that that life is going to walk, feel, and, and just like you and I, if, if our parents had choose that. There wouldn't be any of us. I don't think you disagree on that point, but Chase, you went further and you said that the woman has a right to terminate that child. So I agree, and I'm not saying that they don't, but if you're going to say the life begins and they're, it's a human because two humans made it, why, when does that human fetus into a child's life? Become less important than the mother who's making the decision it to terminate. Be less well, I know. No, okay, so that's fine. Right. So, so a woman doesn't have a right to choose to abort that. No, we we understand what the controversy is, Christine. Right. No, we know that. That's what that's what we're trying to do. That's where we are in the world. Well, let's not break it down by left and right. There, there are people who feel strongly on both sides. Um, I'm sorry. If you're talking about left politically no, and no, no, right, no, 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 you're just I'm choosing A and B. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. But, but yeah, all you're said, Christine, right now is is everything that we've said already up to this point, right? That we're having a hard time figuring out how to yeah, pick this. The point of the debate is trying to find an answer. But is there an answer? Absolutely. Because, oh, wait, to Absolutely. Answer. To whether to this. Is abortion moral? But you didn't. But Christine, you didn't give. But Christine, you. You actually made an argument counter to your own argument. But you said that it is moral for the child to live. But then you said the mother can um, supersede that choice. Now, even though it's moral, you're saying it's not, it no longer matters. But that's a controversy, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you're more saying the way you choose to choose. Right. Right. Does the mother's right more important than the way I think the child has a right to live. But I also don't think a law should be passed by saying a woman doesn't have a choice. But okay, Christine. <laughs> but but okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Chris, Christine. But we have well, we have laws against like killing other people, and you don't, I assume, don't have a problem with that, right? You're not going to say, well, you really, I really shouldn't kill Tracy, but it's up to me to choose, right? You're not going to say that. So. If we believe that this child is a human being, then why should there not be a law that says you can't kill that human being? I don't know. No, we don't. Well, right. Yeah. But we're not talking about those people, Christine. No, no. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about 
in the in just the general best case scenario, I just I'm a person, I got pregnant, I want to have an abortion. Right? I'm healthy, fetus is healthy, I just want to have an abortion because I want to. Then my then I will say no. So I don't get to choose. And it's Okay, so that's what we're all, I think all we're trying to get was you to be to a consistent point, which is that the rights of the child outweigh the choice, the ability to choose. Okay, fine. Ms. Tony, you've had your hand up for a while, and we're never going to get to the second topic if we don't move on, but that's okay. Well, we keep talking about fetus. Yes. Yes. Embryo is a fetus. It's the same thing? Yeah. Well, you want to read what I read? Because... If, if we're going to say it's right or wrong, I guess based on what I read, it doesn't matter, right? So we're saying it's not. No, I don't. <laughs> no, because what I was going to say was if it's just the child is because if the child is supposed to be born, then if it's before eight weeks, it's good to go forward. So you're saying, I think, if it's a human, it's a human. And if it's not a human, it's not a human. But that doesn't, I don't think that helps us. Yeah. So, so the question continues to be, when is it a human? And I think that's what really matters. Okay. Okay. And I think, great, uh, Christine is, well, I think we're all on that same page, although I'm about to leave it, right? Which is, it's just a question of where, where. And for Christine, it's as soon as conception happens, it's a human being. And for some people, it's heartbeat. And for some people, it's nervous system. And for some people, it's uh, ability to, you know, interact with the world. Right, and for some people, it's viability. Like if I took it out and it could live on its own, it's a human being. Right, and da, 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 right, all sorts of. There's a whole range for different people, and I think everybody agrees that humans shouldn't be killed. But things that aren't yet human, even if maybe they will be, someday, that's a different story. And then, then suddenly, the the mom's right to choose starts to have greater impact, right? Because you get to pick what happens to your body. There are lots of laws about embryos. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's this abortion one, for example. And then there's the one about like the whole, like if you're pregnant, if you're nine months pregnant and you're in a car accident and somebody and the person who was driving was say drunk, the other car, that person will be charged for double homicide. Right? Well, but notice I said eight months pregnant, right? I didn't say two months pregnant. Right. So that it, because it's that same, yeah. it is technically still called a fetus. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now I'm gonna I'm gonna say one more thing. It's just gonna like throw. I'm throwing because I'm throwing I'm, I'm throwing the bees nest into the room. Um, one of the things we have not talked about very much in this debate. We spent a lot of time talking about. Is the is it a fetus or a child? Is the fetus a child? Is it a human being? Da, 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 da. And that seems to have a lot of weight on things. Um, and we haven't talked about, even though Christine brought it up briefly, this idea that that you have a right to choose what happens to your body. Right? Well, I didn't even talk bring up the father thing because that's a whole that's a whole different that's a whole different thing, whole different debate. I know. Because um, because at the end of the day, uh, it's the mom's body. Right, and what we haven't talked about very much is a woman's right to choose what happens to her body, and no matter what we think about the 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 gestational sort of track of this uh, of this fetus, it's the mom's body is indisputably involved. Yes. Okay. So some people are going to say it doesn't actually matter when that baby becomes a human. Because at the end of the day, what really matters is you get to decide what happens to your body. The end. Imagine a hypothetical situation. A world-renowned, extremely talented violinist, the best violinist who has ever lived, comes down with a horrible disease, some sort of illness, and is going to die. And the only way that that violinist can live is if someone comes to you in the middle of the night Jessica, kidnaps you out of your house, attaches Jessica to this violinist, and says, you have to stay here attached to this guy to keep him alive. Whether you, whether you, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those famous examples, right? 
And you don't have any say in the matter. You don't get to pick. You just have to do it. <laughs> well, the question is actually could if you could, right? If you were say if they said we're going to attach you, or you can walk away and let this guy die. Would walk away. Would it be morally appropriate? Would it be ethical for you to walk away and let this person die? Well, maybe. But no one had the right. Doesn't matter. It is. No one had the right to grab you and attach you in the first place. Right. The difference with that argument is. Well, let's let's finish. Let's make sure we understand the argument first, right? <laughs> the, so again, the question is. Do, does anyone have the right to tell you you have to do this thing with your body? You have to attach yourself to this human being, even if not doing it means that person dies. So hold on, right? And that's that's the point. That's the question, right? Do you have a responsibility to lose, to give up freedom of of your body to let other people tell you what to do with your body in order to keep someone else alive? And most people are going to say, no, you do not need to do that. You have the right to choose what happens to your body. I'll even go one step further. How many people in this room are organ donors? It doesn't, okay. Actually, I, I didn't mean to out people. You don't have to say. <laughs> if you're not an organ donor, guess who can't take your body parts? Everyone can't take your body parts, right? <laughs> no one is allowed to take your body parts, even if those body parts will save someone's life. And even though you're dead and are not using them, right? You have such control over your body that you actually have to give permission for people to use parts of it, even when you're not using it anymore. And even if those parts might save someone's life, that's how much control you have over your own body, right? No one can do anything to your body that you don't want them to, even save your life if you don't want them to, right? You have to give permission. To, for surgeons to perform surgeries that will save your life. They cannot do those things to you if you do not give them permission, right? That's how much control you have over your own body. So the argument goes, if that's true, then even if I am, even if it's a human being child that lives inside of me, I get to decide what happens to my body. And even if that human being child will die, if I perform this procedure, it's still my body, and I get to say what happens to it. The end. <laughs> Go ahead. Crystal, Tracy, what were we going to say? Well, it doesn't change, it doesn't change the morality. Does what doesn't change the morality? The, um, the, whether you save a life or not. The, whether, whether you have a right to do with your body what you will, mm -hmm. that's one thing. That, mm -hmm. that is your right. It doesn't change the morality. Of saving a life or not. It's particularly one that you had a hand in causing. Okay. So if someone kid, if someone took you and attached someone, you it would be morally nice if you saved the person, but you have uh, no, no such obligation. When you when you yeah, one more problem, one no, more. Well let me can I I want to address one thing at a time. So if you're gonna go into another point well, it's it, you're continuing, okay. So, so your point is, Tracy, if I understand, it's one thing to save the like you're not responsible for the random stranger, no matter how great a violinist or maybe has is going to come up with a cure for cancer, or however important that person is. He's not you. Nobody can make you take care of that person because he's not in some way associated with you. My response is, if that violinist were your son. It wouldn't change anything. No, because you're not doing anything about one. You're you're just as responsible for that that human being that you caused to be. No, no, no. no? you're I'm not responsible for your children, or you are responsible I'm for your children. If it's my child, but I'm not responsible for, if a stranger comes in and, and, and takes me against my will and is attached to no, me. my my point is my point is not that a stranger comes and gets you, but let's say your son comes to you and says, "I'm going to die." Unless you strap yourself to me for the rest of my life and keep me alive. Even six months. <laughs> Even six months. Even six months, right? Pick your time. It doesn't matter. The point is, 
that no no not ethically right no, you no. from a from a nice standpoint right you you are just as ethically right in saying no to that person whether it's the rest of your life or six months or a day right if you now you might be a bigger like asshole yeah right for saying no but that doesn't mean it's wrong right you get to decide what you do with your body even if your child is the one who needs the help right that is still your body it doesn't change anything and so if it's your child whether it's after it's born it's your child before it's born it's still your child i don't so see the difference back to, we're back to your right to trump the child right saying your right to control your own body trump trumps trump every trump right trump the right of another human being all of them, every single right. And that seems to be true, because if we, start, if we start backing that up, then we get into weird situations like, hey, I know you really want your kidney, but this guy over here is going to die if we don't have it. I don't want to give it up. Tough. This guy's going to die. And his right to live is more important than your right to control what happens to your body. Then that means I'm going to come and take your kidney. <laughs> That, but that's that's right now you're changing the, the thing, right? Not really. No, that's when, not really, because you said that's in terms of a child, she's absolutely right. You you caused that 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 situation. You caused the but, child to be attacked. Okay, so let's back it up again. If it's a if it's a grown up child who has a bad kidney, right, and the police come to you or the medical people come to you and say, hey, your grown up child has a bad kidney. We we need your kidney to replace it, and you say no. Hold on. And they start to say, and they say, well, too bad. His light, his right to life is more important than your right to, to control what happens to your body. Then they're going to cut you open and take your kidney and give it to your kid. But, but he, he can like, who can survive? Even if it ain't going to be that long after, like, he's going to die in five minutes if we don't take your kidney. Right, but he's still here. Like, the what? Baby, what? Like, Why does that matter? No, because what I'm saying is like the baby. We could we could do that too, right? We could say your son doesn't need a kidney. In fact, he needs constant blood transfusion. And the only way that'll work is if we connect your circulatory systems and you have to stay attached to your kid for, I don't know, nine months. Right? That seems like a problem to tell somebody they have to do that. Because then we get into situations. What's not murder? Murder is active. If you're again, if you abortion, if you're making the analogy of abortion, abortion is murder. You're actively ending a life. If I lock you in a room, if I lock you in a room and don't feed you, right? I, I get it, but I'm trying to balance it because it's hard. I, I, I. We're going to move on in a second. I'm just throwing that out, right? Because that's a thing that I think people don't think about enough in this discussion. We get caught up in this, is it a human being discussion? And I think there's a whole other side to it in which that doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't matter if it's a human being. What matters is it's mom's body and mom gets to decide what happens but to that's it. that's why it matters if it's a human being because then it becomes a life versus it's not a human being, it's almost like nothing wrong. I'm saying even if it's a human being, it doesn't, it's mom's right to so choose. So it's what about the right of your son who has to be transfused his whole life? Yeah, right. It's, it's, hard. Like it's, hard. Yeah, like yeah, it's much easier. Sure, it's much easier to say, "Oh, that adult is going to die." It's easier for us to imagine adults. We get all sad about babies. <laughs> I just don't understand the difference. It should be a degree on whether you choose to take care of your body if it's your child living inside you or someone else that can. I'm only just having this discussion this far because you guys are bringing that up because I already told you my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 the difficulty lies in where does your morality lie? Because, I mean, the arguments can be on both sides. When you, we talk about human right to live, 
there's, I, a, there's a strong argument there. And, and, and to be to be quite open, mm -hmm. I actually, while I'm, I don't really agree with abortion, I do believe in a woman's right to choose. Well, it's, so, it's, no, so I, I, I do. I, I'm, I'm always that. I believe in a woman's right to choose, even though personally, I think I, abortion are immoral. But that's so weird to me. I just don't get that. But, like, but why? But see, I didn't do because I, I never have to make that choice. So I don't oh. have to walk that line a little bit. I oh, can't. I can't. I'll, I'll never have to decide whether or not to bomb another country with a nuclear weapon. But I can have an opinion about whether or not it's moral. Okay. Well, then, then why is it okay? You, but you said it's immoral, but a woman has a right to choose, right? Every time, if it's immoral, it's immoral. No, it doesn't need to be immoral, but I can't stop. Sure you could. You could lobby for the for Roe versus Wade to be overturned. You could change the whole thing. You could absolutely change it. Why, <laughs> Why not? All right, I just, okay, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. It's obviously a tough thing, right? That's why I brought it up. It's a tough thing to talk about. And my, I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. All I'm trying to do is to make you think about why you believe what you believe. There probably is. Huh. I personally, personally believe that it is very, very, very hard to get around the woman has a right to control what happens to her body. And if that's true, then no amount of this other crap about it being a human being or not matters. And that's why that is so And the, but no, no, circumstances don't matter. <laughs> no, no man can tell you what to do with your body. <laughs> no, anybody can tell you what to do with your body. But... Uh, Yeah, but okay. So again, I'm not talking about. I I shouldn't have said man. No one. But but Christ, Christine, that's not my point. The point is, no one, man, woman, anything, gets to tell you what to do with your body. That's my point. Okay. And so, father, sorry, you don't get to tell anybody, any woman, what to do. Grandparents, right? No, you don't get to say. Police, the court system, nobody, right? That's what I believe. And so, and so, whether or not it's the first abortion or the thirtieth, whether or not I'm sketched out by the idea or whatever, nobody gets to say. I just don't understand why people get sketched out by it. That's, but hold on, hold on. Chelsea's had her hand up. Yeah. So you're saying there, there, there are medical reasons, even if you make it illegal, where it would need to happen. And I don't think anybody disagrees with that, right? I don't think anybody believes that we should force a woman to die because we can't, like, we, no, we, we've advanced medicine to the point where it's going to, like, this thing that's happening is going to kill you, so we're going we're gonna to deal with that in a way that saves your life, I, right? And that's why I was intentionally trying to get away from those sort of corner cases to a very sort of middle of the road, like, hi, I'm pregnant, I want to have an abortion. And in my opinion, and I'm not trying to convince anybody here, I promise, but all I'm saying is that if it's my body and I want to have an abortion, my reasons don't matter, my health doesn't matter, my poverty level doesn't matter, none of that matters. It's me, and I get to decide what happens to me. Well, the great choice, you made it so that you said you wanted to question. Because the great choice is all right. I feel like we can say it's legal because it's your right. It's your body. Now, it's asking my personal opinion. Do I think it's moral? No. But, 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 I, the, legal thing, the legal thing is, no, I'm not saying that it's legal because it's your right. I'm saying it's moral because it's your right to control what happens to your body. It is it is a moral action to control what happens to your body. Only if you believe 
only if you believe that that person's, only if A, you believe it's a person, and B, you believe that person's right to live is more important or even equally as important as your right to control your body. And if you don't believe that's true, if you believe that your right to control your body is more valuable, more important than anyone else's right to live, then it's not even a question. I get it. I get it. But it's still, I get it. All right. All right. I'm not, all right. Again, right? We're, I, I never in any in, in my wildest dreams did I think I was going to walk in here and we were all going to walk out right. thinking the same thing, right? That's n not going to happen, and I'm not trying to make it happen. I, that's what I'm going to do, except. <laughs> I, I'm okay with it. You can be confused, and that's okay. Part. Yes. This time you're going to add anything, or are you are you retracting your hand? I mean, well, I was so quick to remember people. I don't think we need to do that, but we need to figure it out. Okay. <laughs> This to me. So, 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 not to. Right well, okay. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that are going on there, right? The the Constitution's only existed for like 250 years, yes, and like, and people have been having abortions for lots and lots and lots of years, right? I don't even tens of thousands of years, right? So those two things aren't really very closely related. Um, this is, for a lot of people, an example of why they don't believe in God. Because if this were such a horrible thing, or such a good thing, you'd think at some point he would have let us know. But that doesn't, I'm sure there are people who are asking, and they're not getting good answers. Right? That's a problem. Moving on. Moving on. What, how much of time? Oh, oh my gosh, we've only got 30 minutes. Yeah. What, Christine, you still have a question? Oh, go ahead. Yes. Yes. We don't say our body. It's your body. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. That's a great question. That's a great question. Absolutely. We do actually. You know, do you know suicides? Did you know that suicide is not illegal in the state? Illegal in this state. But well, there are a couple different reasons, right? A couple different reasons. I think that we recognize as human beings that some people make bad decisions, okay? Or in the heat of the moment, they're feeling particularly emotional and upset and so on. And so we, we try to convince them that maybe this isn't the best choice for you right now. Hence abortion. <laughs> but, right, if you look at the way abortion works for real in this country, right, most people, not most, many people have to travel for out of state, wait for three days, right, and then have to pay a lot of money to do it. These are not rash decisions. These are not people like, oh, my boyfriend... Like, there's only one abortion clinic in the entire state of Mississippi. Oh, I'm like, Texas. Yep. Like, Texas has, I think, like yeah. Texas, I think, only has two. Um, there, there are not very many in Connecticut. No. No. Um, because what's happening is the, these trap laws is the is the name of what they're called. I can't remember exactly. It trap stands for something. It's a, an acronym. Um, but it, what, people are, what people have done instead, because they can't make abortion straight up illegal because the Supreme Court decided that it's legal, what they do is they apply all these weird restrictions to things like abortion clinics have to have hallways that are wide enough for two gurneys to pass one another, right? That sort of thing. Even though that will... Gurneys have to be able to pass each other in the hallway. There's no reason. There's no reason. There's no reason for any of that to happen. So... Right. Right. They're restricting. They're they're forcing abortion clinics to close down, so they are essentially making abortion impossible, even though it's not illegal. Um, and that ends up 
right? And, and so there are places where, uh, so there are lots of places around the country where that's happening and it's becoming harder and harder for people to actually get access to abortions. Um, and that seems even, I mean, regardless of your feeling about abortion, that seems wrong, right? If it's, if it's the law, it should be upheld. And if it's not the law, then, right? I mean, and so it seems weird to try and circumvent what the, the legal system has established uh, by being sketchy. Right? And that's basically what's happening in a lot of places around the country. Um, Quick jump. Quick ha ha, jumping. Death penalty. <laughs> ha, even more exciting. Right? Uh, yeah, we only have a few minutes to talk about the death penalty, but that's okay. It usually doesn't take very long. Oh, yeah, this one, maybe we can just do a quick, quick show of hands. Quick show of hands, here we go. Death penalty, morally acceptable. Capital punishment, morally acceptable. OK. And so I assume, because everybody has to vote here, so everybody who thinks morally or capital punishment morally unacceptable, morally wrong. In the middle, Crystal, no vote here. Okay. I mean, it's one thing, guys. It's one thing to say like I'm not sure how I feel about this. <laughs> it's so it's it's one thing to say that I'm not sure. I said both, and you didn't vote for either. Okay, so it's one thing to say that I'm not sure. It's another thing to say just like I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna have an opinion. Like it, it these things matter. People die, right? This is a this is literally a a matter of life and death, and so it, it matters, and we should be able to to come to a, an opinion about it. I know lots of people don't ever think about it, but that's not a good thing, right? We we should think about these things because we do them. Um, I mean, again, I think the, I'm sure, argument, it's stressful. the argument for uh -huh. or rather against um, that one punishment, yeah, is has been made in the last couple last decade or so with all the DNA, all the new sampling, yes. uh, DNA testing come out. How many yeah. people were yeah. were yeah. wrong yeah. because of yes, or how many people have been released in the last couple mm -hmm. of years? So think back. All the, you know, over time, how many people were false this? I mean, we can never actually know the number, but we have to assume. Yes. So we're back to a utilitarian thing, right? So the the point, uh, um, Tracy's point again is that the big one of the big problems with with capital punishment is number five here: irrevocable mistakes. Right? Mistakes get made, people die. There's no like whoops and letting you out after however many years, right? If you're dead, you're dead. There's no no taking that back, and and mistakes get made, and we see that we've seen it recently with DNA evidence. Um, it is. Sure, sure. So again, we're talking very much about consequences here, right? About the fact that right, punish, killing an innocent person seems to be a really significant consequence, right? That outweighs maybe even possibly the good of justice being done, right? Being performed on really bad people. Well, I'm, 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 I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt right now. Um, so there's that. There's also the fact that sometimes, right, the 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 uh, execution can be can be poorly performed and is really painful. And we talked about that back when we talked about human rights, uh, the idea that we're not allowed to torture people, right, because they're still human beings, even if they're criminals. And so we shouldn't be, right, uh, they have a right not to be horribly treated. And so even if they're criminals and they've done horrible things, we shouldn't be like, you know, just, like, uh, right. Sure. I'm sure that's in the, in the, it's in the, United Nations thing, right? You have the right to a, a good meal before you're executed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a very utilitarian way of approaching it, right? The consequences can be really bad if, uh, of, of, of that sort of thing, right? But some people are gonna argue that actually the consequences of, even if the occasional innocent person is killed, the, the deterrent and justice factor outweigh that, right? That it's actually better uh, because if we didn't have that, then people would be out killing people left and right, but and so on. Um, maybe, maybe. Uh, I think that people are going to argue not as much as. Right? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. But again, what else do we think? One wrong death is too many. One wrong death is too many. So we should get rid of the whole thing, or we should just get better at figuring out. Well, but so someone could say, all right, fine, yeah, it sucks to kill innocent people. So we're just going to make really, really sure. What if this person like confesses? Well, then again, here, here are some different, so many circumstances. So how about people who are actually in favor, responding here instead of me, of the of the death penalty, Jessica? What are, what are your thoughts, right? When somebody, when, <laughs> when Tracy says, <laughs> you're just trying to vote. Well, now's your chance. Um, some people just deserve it. Some people just deserve it. Okay. If you're, Which people? If you're, okay, if you're, like, killing people, you're a murderer, mass murderer, or whatever, what's the point of just wasting your time sitting in the prison, like, not even there for life, you're just taking up space when other people, like, other criminals could be... Sure, we don't want to inconvenience the other criminals. <laughs> no, it's just the prisons in general. They're like overpopulated. And sure, but prisons are not overpopulated because of murderers, right? They're overpopulated because of drug users. Yeah. No, right. right. So, so but, like, drug users. My point is that if you're killing people who actually like deserve it, people who are murderers or rapists or whatever, like that's the point. Like that's the point is yeah, no, we're not talking about killing like, hey, you rob that bank, right? We're talking. Yeah. But how does one deserve it? What do you have to do? What do you have to do in order to deserve to die? What do you have to do in order to deserve to die? Okay. 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 Okay.
the Jeffrey Dahmers of the world, right? Right, right. The, the people there, they are people who have committed usually a murder, right? Um, by and large, they are people of color who have killed people who are not of color.